If you recall, we are going to build our projections based off of similar players following seasons. To do this, we need to be able to find the most similar player seasons. So the question is, how do we do this? We are going to take the normalized stats from a single player, put them into an array, and then take the normalized stats of a player to compare them against and put that player into another array. We will then use our calc distance error function to find the absolute distance between the two players, then sum that value to get a single percent error. Once we've compared one player, we will move on to the next player. This means for a single player, we will be comparing every single player's season against that player to find the percent error for each. Once we know the percent error, we can sort it and take the 10 most similar player seasons. So first, let's look at a current player array. Before we do this for every player, let's take a single player to focus on. I put all the player names in a hat and randomly selected one. It ended up being Drew Holiday. Let's take a look at his 2016-17 season for this exercise. We'll save his player season and player ID into variables so we can reference them throughout our script. So if we say current player season equals 2016-17 and current player ID equals 201950. In our pandas basics tutorial, we went over how to get specific values with the dot item notation. The reason we want the cell value in a list format is because we are going to turn it into an array to make things easier and more efficient for calculating on it. We can filter the large data frame with our two variables we created to get a specific stack column we want to use when finding similar players. Let's get Drew's points first before doing it for every one of Drew's stack columns. We can get these stats from our normalized data frame, which we will rerun here for our convenience. All right, so now that we have our df norm data frame, let's filter uh, on the player ID equals the current player ID and the season ID equals the current player season. So again, to do this, we can take the df norm, we want that location since we have the player ID. And we're going to set that equal to current player ID. And we want to make sure the DF norm season ID is also equal to the current player season variable. And within that, we want the points norm column. And all of this we want as that item. So let's just make this a little more readable. And we're going to save this into Drew points norm. And let's run that. And if we print Drew points norm variable, we get for that season, his normalized points per game was at 0.47. Now we could do this for every column and it would look like so. We're basically saying the current player stats and we want that same item method for the points norm, the minutes norm, the field goals made norm, field goal attempts norm. And we're basically saying where the current player ID equals player ID and the current player season equals season ID. And we could run this and if we were to print the current player stats, you'll see we get the following. So this is basically all of his normalized stats, points norm, minutes norm, field goals made norm, and so on and so forth. So we're going to do the same thing, but let's turn this into an array by passing the list within np array method. And we will now call this our current player vector. So basically we're saying our current player vector equals, and this is the MP dot array. And we are now going to take that and wrap this list within there. And if we were to run this and I typed that wrong, let's try it again. And if we now print our current player vector, you'll see we have an array. 
Now this is going to make the math a lot easier and a lot more efficient. And so we're going to go through the same exact cells, but with a different player ID and season ID. In this case, let's use Michael Kidd Gilchrist and his 2013-14 uh, season. Instead of the current player season, we're going to call it the compared player season. That's going to be his 2013-14. And the compared player ID and Michael Kidd Gilchrist is 203077. And now we can create the compared player array, which let's copy paste this. And here's a fun little one. If we go to edit, find and replace, and we type in current, and we want to replace that with compared, and we'll replace all. So now it's the compared player vector, and that's the compared player ID and the compared player season with all else being the same. And we run that, and I can't spell compared player vector. You see, we get Michael Kidd Gilchrist's normalized stats. Okay, now that we have our current player vector and our compared player vector, we are going to use our calc distance function that we created earlier for the two player arrays. We can find the percent error, which we'll use to sort the similar players. Now, the percent error finds the relative error between the two players across all eight stat columns at which point we can morph that number into a single column and sort on it to find the 10 most player similar seasons. Before we run the calc distance function, we need to vectorize it with np.vectorize. The purpose of np.vectorize is to transform functions which are not numpy aware into a function that can return numpy arrays. Since our calc distance function doesn't return a numpy array, we can run it through the npvectorize method and it will solve our issues with floats. Our function would take floats as inputs and returns floats as outputs. We need to vectorize it because we cannot concatenate a float to a list. So basically what we would do here is npvectorize. We have our calc distance function and we are just gonna save this into our vfunc. And now we can put our two player vectors into the function as parameters and save it as a distance vect. So distance vect equals our vfunc, which again is just taking our vectorized calc, dist, calc distance function. And here we're going to pass it our current player vector as one input and our compared player vector as our second one. And if we run this, and we can print our distance vect. And here we now have the distance calculated for each of them. And to get the average percent error, we need to divide the sum total of the absolute difference by the number of columns. Why the absolute difference? Well, because we start to add and subtract negatives, it will not show the true distance between the numbers. So if we print our number for Drew and Michael Kidd Gilchrist, we should get the following. So here we're going to take our MP sum of the absolute distance vector and divide that by the length of the distance vector, which is taking in all of the columns. And we'll just save this to some number that we care about. And if we print that number, we get 0 0.25. So is the 0 0.25 number good or bad? Well, we can't tell that until we compare it to more players. 